to Vedic Life Coaching. Thanks so much for joining me. Now, we're going to go through June 2018, the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Report, and we're going to go through all the planets. So if your moon, all the signs, I should say, and within each of these little reports, I am going to go through all the planets. But each sign we're going to go through, so from Aries to Virgo, and this is part one. And then I'm going to record part two separately, and that's going to be Libra through to Pisces. And this time I'm also going to film an overview video. Now the overview video uh, this time is going to feature Saturn. So I'm actually not going to include Saturn this time in your slow moving planets as I did last time. Uh, what I'm going to do, I had an idea how to restructure this and I think this way of doing it is going to be a good structure because when I talk about your fast moving planets, we're always going to look at Sun, Mercury, Venus, but then the slow moving planets, I might mix things up a little bit. Um, I won't just always do the same format. And the reason that I'm going to do it that way is because I want this content to be fresh and exciting for you each time. Because if it gets too routine and too much the same, it's not going to be interesting to watch. And the other thing is, is that the slow moving planets, I mean, Saturn spends two and a half uh, years in a sign. So each month, I don't want to say exactly the same thing. Um, so that's why this is a neat way of kind of, you know, I'll take Saturn out this time and we'll do Rahu Ketu Axis. And then next time, who knows, next month I may be guided to uh, include Saturn there, just a new angle on Saturn or, um, you know, there'll be, I'll, I'll definitely be guided as to how to keep this fresh and alive and different and interesting. I mean, the movement of the planets in the sky is always fascinating for sure. And it's always different because they are always moving into, you know, if not signs, nakshatras, we have so much in Vedic astrology, uh, so much excitement, I, I definitely realise. But even still, I'm still trying to work out how to structure this thing so it's it keeps it really fresh and different and interesting. So the overview video uh, is going to be something that I'm going to add. So we're always going to have three videos. We're going to have an overview video, which is optional. Uh, you know, that's just going to have an overall. So it doesn't matter what sign, if you know your moon sign or not, you can always watch that one. And then if you know your moon sign, then definitely dip in and get the detail in part one or part two. So Aries moon. Welcome Aries Moon, welcome, thanks so much for joining me and we're going to get stuck into your fast moving planets and then we're going to have a look at your slow moving planets. So fast moving, what's happening? We've got the sun moving around June 14 to 15, it's moving from your second house to the third house. So you're quite possibly coming out of a time of a bit of financial strain, maybe you've been spending a lot, but after the 15th, this is all going to improve. So good career opportunities. It's going to be better for your career. More opportunities might come. You might earn more money. Uh, your health is going to progress. If you've been feeling any energy drains lately, that's, that's also going to get quite a bit of a boost. Mercury uh, on the 10th of June is moving into your third house and on the 25th of June is moving into your fourth house. So this time Mer Mercury is taking quite a bit of, you know, covering quite a bit of ground and going into some varied places. So we've got a little bit of a mixed bag here because you've possibly up until the 10th of June going to experience a boost in income, but then from the period of 10 June to 25th June, you might have a dip in energy, might be a dip in energy your personal physical energy and possibly your income as well uh, if you're self-employed that kind of thing you might notice that um, but then don't worry after the 25th of June new income opportunities that's going to pick up for you again Venus on the 9th of June shifts from your third house to the fourth house so you've possibly oh this is fantastic you've possibly been experiencing uh, a boost to your courage a boost to luck a boost to social standing or maybe you've been meeting friends getting out and about fantastic now what you can look forward to is more wish fulfillment this is so good property uh you know property deals that go smoothly if you're 
having anything to do with that, that should all go well. And social status. Social status, um, friends, meeting people, networking, all that kind of thing is going to be fantastic. You will have a great time with your partner, with the one that you love. And if you'd like to meet the one that you'd love, well, get out and about and you just might meet that person. So let's take a look at your slow moving planets. Uh, this time I've decided to focus on Ketu, Rahu and Jupiter who is in retrograde. Mars Ketu conjunction, this is very interesting, happening in the 10th in your 10th house. I'll also touch a little bit on the full moon. Um, it's happening in your 9th house, June 27. So here we've got um, some interesting things. Now, if you've been working really, really hard, but you haven't been yielding much in return, this could be very much why. Um, there is some stuck energy to do with this conjunction for you. Uh, things might be moving quite slowly. So if you heard the fast moving report and you're thinking that's not happening for me, this could well be why. Um, the full moon though in your ninth house on June 27, this should give you an opportunity to complete and integrate something that you have been working on spiritually or emotionally. So perhaps something you've been digging deep on intellectually or some pattern that keeps coming around again or just something that you need to integrate. Uh, especially anywhere where you're digging deep, trying to get to the bottom of something or it's wisdom or that kind of thing. This could well be the time to integrate um, any of those learnings. So that, that should be really good for you. Uh, we've got Rahu in your fourth house. Now this Rahu Ketu um, axis is going to be in these positions, 10th house, 4th house, to March 2019. And where your Rahu is, I would suggest that if you are having anything to do with property matters, I know we had Venus um, giving you some good energy there, but do take extra care with Rahu here. Uh, and just as a general thing for you, until March 2019, go slow, take it easy uh, at home if, if you can. You know, anything you can do to just make life a bit more relaxing and pleasant and easy is going to be a really good thing for you. And it's a good time for spirituality as well. You know, um, this is definitely a good time for that. Any time is a good time for spirituality because spirituality is the one thing that you can learn from and you know, it's negotiating win, 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 win situations all around you. So you can definitely get that knowledge from your spiritual studies. Now, Jupiter uh, is in retrograde in your seventh house to mid-October. Oh, now this is fantastic. Great time for expansion to your business, perhaps adding on a business partner, meeting business partners, collaborating, working with people, all that kind of thing. Great time for marriage as well. Uh, and also, I mean, great time to meet marriage prospects, people, you know, your soulmate. This is, this is that kind of time. This is a good kind of transit. You know, retrograde energy, I don't particularly see, to me, I don't see retrograde energy as being negative. I just see it that we're getting stronger energy from that planet. So don't worry about the retrograde there. Um, that's not a bad thing. He does go forward soon though. I think it's in July if I'm not mistaken. Um, great health with this Jupiter here where he is. Good health, great travel. So Aries Moon, that is your overview. Sounds, sounds pretty good there. We are going to step into Taurus Moon. Welcome Taurus, thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a quick look at your fast moving planets and then we're going to have a look at your slow moving planets. So fast moving, what have we got? Sun, the sun around June 14th, 15th is going to shift from your first house to the second house. So for you, yeah, your expenses might be a little bit high. Uh, they have, haven't they? That's okay, don't worry. That's just how that is. Things will change. Things always change. That's the great thing about transit. So you might have also been experiencing a dip in energy, health issues, um, not feeling 100%, that kind of thing. That's okay too. Um, that that's, that's, could be to do with the sun for you. 
let's have a look at what Mercury is doing. Mercury um, Mercury is making quite a transit. So Mercury this time uh, on the 10th of June is stepping into your second house and on the 25th of June is stepping into your third house. So Mercury is covering a lot of ground and again it's looking like a little bit of a mixed bag. We've got up until 10th of June, you know, there might have been stress, financial difficulty, so very much matching up with what's happening with the sun there. But then from the 10th to the 25th, you should find a nice boost to your income, hopefully. And then after that, again, you know, energy might dip a little bit and it's not ideal for travel. So, of course, travel if you need to. Uh, don't stop travel. But, you know, it's the kind of thing where if it's just for fun, there, there could be better transits for that. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a mixed bag there, as I say, but, but some nice energy there, possibly a boost to your income sort of in the middle chunk of the month. Let's have a look at Venus. Venus, June 9th is shifting from your second house to the third house. So this is really, really good. You're getting a lot of love from Venus. This looks fantastic. Have you bought any new clothes lately, Taurus Moon? Uh, or have you bought anything a bit extravagant or something that perhaps you uh, had to think twice about? Good on you if you did, that makes sense. Um, this is a good time to go out and meet friends, to grow your business, just to get out and about really. Um, your courage should be at quite a bit of a high. You should be feeling courageous, you should be feeling social and definitely creative. So Venus is giving you a lot of love and I'm really excited about that. Okay, slow moving planets. Let's have a look at what's going on here. So we've got Mars K to conjunction for you happening in the ninth house and you've got full moon in the eighth house all right so um yeah this is not brilliant for finances and you might be discovering some roadblocks on your way to success if that is the case and I mean we've certainly seen a little bit of that happening in the fast moving energies there for you as well I mean you're getting some love from Venus but Sun and Mercury have been a bit uh, tricky or are being a bit tricky there too. Um, yeah, it, 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 there, could, there could be some uh, some roadblocks to progress that you might be experiencing. Now, in terms of this full moon happening in your eighth house, you will be required, and that's going to be on June the 27th, you're going to be looking to complete or integrate some things emotionally and spiritually. And I would say that's anything to do with fears, uh, it could be anything to do with anxiety or loneliness as well. You might have been feeling a little bit lonely. Uh, any of these feelings, any of melancholic sort of feelings, that might be, um, some of that might come up and during this full moon it'll be a culmination. You'll be able to um, integrate, uh, you know, anything that's not not 100% grand on, on, on that scale of anxiety loneliness fears that kind of thing so um so it could be a time of integration for some of that easier said than done i know believe me i mean there's a whole video in how to integrate i mean there's hours of chat about integrating and healing um don't worry, this, there's nothing sad here. It's just about being with that stuff. It's, it's just about being with it and going, do you know what, this is natural. That's really, I mean, to sum it up in a sentence, it's that, right? So that's something you can do at this full moon. You can kind of, you know, integrate some things as just being pure and natural and it's okay to have those feelings. Uh, Rahu in your third house, right? So you've got Rahu in your third house, running through to March 2019 and same for Ketu. Ketu there in your ninth house is till uh, March 2019. Rahu in the third house to March 2019. This is fantastic for career. This is great. You want a promotion? You get a promotion. Uh, well, you can work towards one and see how that goes. But I mean, the, the energy is supporting it. So try, try to, you know, go forward, go go places you know and I mean look there are K2 might be throwing in roadblocks to success but it shouldn't stop you trying those are just going to make you stronger so Rahu here is giving you great energy to enjoy life to work harder the energy is there so do use it 
uh, you know, and I mean, that's that's life, isn't it? Ups and downs. Some days we're really great and some days we're not. And I do think these transits play into some of that. Um, you should have a good time with your siblings as well, which is really good. And increased willpower, increased courage, you know, and, and you'll find the increased willpower and increased courage if you go to that, go towards that step out of your comfort zone you'll have to do some action in order to get some of that good stuff okay so these uh, career and promotions and all these kind of thing you'll have to put in some effort for that 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 i i do see that with the rahu energy that does require some action from us now jupiter retrograde uh six to mid october okay yeah six half yeah not ideal. Uh, Jupiter's not thrilled to be in the sixth house, I can tell you that, and that's to mid-October. So again, if you're having any tensions in life, it could be to do with Jupiter. So it's not a great placement. Can increase health issues, can increase expenditure, can in increase your debt. Absolutely. Um, best to stay away from arguments or legal troubles, but, you know, this is the world. We have Sometimes we have these things to deal with, just do so thoughtfully, just do so with time. Okay, so anytime you hear in an astrological report that, oh, you know, this is going to be terrible or whatever, I always think to myself, well, maybe you just need more time and more consideration and more thought, you know. Um, doesn't necessarily mean anything bad is going to happen. Okay, let's move on to Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon. Welcome, Gemini. Thank you for joining and we're going to take a look at your fast moving planets and then we're going to take a look at your slow moving planets. So this time your fast moving planets we're looking at Sun, Mercury, Venus and let's take a look at the Sun. So we've got the Sun, oh dear I've got a little uh, moth join us, go away. <laughs> um, sun, June 14th to 15th around that time, Sun is going to shift from your 12th house to the 1st house. So for you, this might be a dip in energy. This might be a time where you want to go a bit slow. You want to look at your health. You want to look at your diet. You just want to make sure uh, that you're treating your physical body the best you possibly can. And if you do decide to go to a gym or incorporate something like that into your life, then do so slowly. Do so mindfully in a slow way. You know, going to the gym doesn't mean doing a one hour workout, it might mean at the start doing just some stretches for 10 minutes, you know, if you're new to that kind of thing, uh, don't push it. So um, that would be my advice there. Mercury is making quite a bit of a transit. He's doing a lot. He's going from, so 10th of June, going from your 12th into the 1st, 25th of June, then going into your second house. So he's covering a lot of ground this time. Uh, so right up until the 25th of June, I mean, you might experience that there are increased expenditures or that money isn't great. Um, you might feel a dip in your own energy, uh, and, and money wise things are a bit tight. That's okay. When Mercury moves into the second house, there is going to be a lift to your income. There is going to be a boost to your income and that's going to happen after the 25th of June. So look forward to that. And of course, you know, when I say that, don't don't let that stop you from still trying to raise your income. You know, there's always uh, the power of now. There's always the law of attraction. There's always all these other things at your disposal. So even if you hear in a report that, you know, things are a bit tight or whatever, don't worry. Still believe in yourself. You can manifest what you want when you want. But after the 25th of June, that's going to be a whole lot easier. Now, uh, Venus on June the 9th is shifting from your first house to the second house. Oh, now this is sensational. You're having a great time with Venus. This is good. So we've got good times, happy in all areas of life. My goodness. Um, you may have been buying new things. You may want to keep buying new things. And your love keeps flourishing. Love around you, love within you, love with people. Uh, maybe you're in love. Maybe you'd like to be in love. Well, get out there and start meeting some people because this is a really good time for you in regards to that. Slow moving planets. Let's take a look at what you've got going on. Mars K2 conjunction in the eighth house. Uh, and I've also got a little note about your full moon in the seventh house. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, okay. If you've been experiencing 
any health challenges. Um, and this could be, as we were talking about, you know, a dip in energy with Mercury. And, I mean, you, your sun as well, do you know. That's, um, yeah, okay, health problems. That is quite a bit of a focus for you. So, I mean, the gym advice there was quite good, uh, possibly. Um, or just some kind of health routine. I've heard some people, they just do like a little plank move, two minutes every day, and that's doing wonders for their health. So what tiny things can you incorporate in to lift the quality of your health? That's what I'd be looking to do. Uh, in terms of the full moon that's happening in your seventh house on the 27th of June, this will have you completing and integrating anything emotional or spiritual to do with, say, your partner, your life partner, uh, or business, something to do with your business as well. Uh, maybe there's something that you need to feel into and just integrate uh, within yourself. So that's something to bear in mind. Rahu in the second house. Now, this Rahu Ketu axis, so we have Ketu in your eighth, as I just talked about, um, and we've got Rahu in the second. Uh, they're going to be there till March 2019. That's why they're in slow moving planets this time. Um, yeah, this isn't the most ideal placement for Rahu. Uh, there could be financial stress, for example. Uh, expenditure might be a little bit higher than normal. But when we've got that going on, that is really just an opportunity for you to pay more attention to that side of your life, to restructure that side of your life, to get good at managing finances. This is your opportunity to be doing that. So there's plenty to do. And there are so many books uh, and courses by, you know, I, I read all those Rich Dad, Poor Dad books and you know, I, I even got into Tiger Property courses at, at one time. Uh, I, I didn't end up becoming a property investor at all, <laughs> but... But I took a course. <laughs> so, um, you know, I mean, it's just good to educate oneself about these things. So if you need to do that, step out there and do that. This is also a really good time to improve your diet and to um, introduce a health regime. And yeah, I have talked about that quite a little bit for you with your son and the slow moving planets there as well. So goodness, this is... Um, this is quite a time for you, Gemini. You might have to work a little bit harder than usual, but it's all going to be worthwhile. Now, oh, well, this is sensational. Now, if you're experiencing some good things, this is why Jupiter in your fifth house to mid-October. Great. Hallelujah. I'm loving this for you. Okay, Jupiter's bringing the good stuff. So, so is Venus as well. So this is good. So what's Jupiter bringing? Well, I mean, all areas of your life are going to get a boost with this Jupiter. Love is great for you right now. Romance, fantastic. Uh, if you are ready to meet someone, step out and meet someone because that someone would love to meet you. I just know it. Uh, children, great time to spend with your kids. If, you, if you've got children, that's wonderful. Uh, a great time to study. If you want to study something, if you want to embark on something new, something creative, this is just beautiful guys so this is really good finances can also get a boost through this jupiter as well so you've really got jupiter giving you some love here and that is a nice long transit for you i'm so happy believe me i love seeing that all right cancer moon welcome cancer thank you so much for joining us let's get stuck into your fast moving planets and then we're going to take a look at your slow moving planets so Fast moving, we've got the sun, June 14th, 15th, around there, shifting from your 11th house to your 12th house. So this is pretty cool. This is, you might be experiencing some uh, unexpected gains until the 14th there, appreciation from your boss. This is great. Uh, after that period, your finances might slow down a little bit. Things might, you know, just go back to a more business as usual type pace, but that's fine. Um, you've had a good time with sun being in the 11th there. Now let's take a look at Mercury. Mercury is making quite a big transit. Sorry about that Cancer Moon. My camera just collapsed. So I think I was in the middle of Mercury. Let's just pick up at Mercury. You know, I think your sun was, uh, yeah, your sun was pretty good. Unexpected gains, that kind of thing. Things tending to slow down a little bit. Business as usual. Mercury, right. So Mercury is making a really big transit 
uh, 10th of June going into your 12th house, 25th of June going into your first house. So what do we have here? Um, got a little bit of a mixed bag here because it looks like a boost to your willpower. It looks like things definitely um, improve to say 10th of June. But then, yeah, dip in, dip in energy, dip in wealth possibly. Uh, you know, it's just a time to go easy on all relationships, avoid arguments, all that kind of thing, um, or avoid, avoid getting too involved, that kind of thing. Maybe get a bit of time for yourself if you possibly can. So it's nothing too bad. It's just um, it's just a bit of a change there with Mercury, um, a bit of a mixed bag. So you've got some good and you've got some little dips happening there. Um, then we're going to have a look at Venus. So Venus, uh, June 9th, shifts from your 12th house to the 1st house. Now this is beautiful. I'm loving this for you. This is great. So financial gains, wealth, um, all the good stuff there, which is wonderful. And it's a really, really great time to meet a partner if you're single. So lucky you. Very, very good. And if you're in love, that's wonderful too so really great time uh, really great time to expand your social scene as well and and enjoy that social scene you know with your significant other let's take a look at your slow moving planet so we've got mars k2 conjunction happening in the seventh house and we're also going to touch briefly on the full moon in the sixth uh, house that's june 27th so yeah K2 Mars conjunction. So, I mean, if you've been feeling that your health isn't 100%, I could definitely see why. Um, it might be that you're just feeling a little bit run down, perhaps, um, you know, deep in energy. Uh, you know, maybe you're finding things are going slow or dragging a little bit or a little bit of stuck energy, that kind of thing. Um, don't worry too much about that. That's that's just an underlying thing. Uh what you do have to look forward to actually is this full moon in the sixth house is going to be good for you, uh, happening on the June, June the 27th. This is a good culmination regarding your health, work, a partner, significant other, that kind of thing. This is some good culmination, something that you're going to integrate that's going to be really positive or something that comes to fruition in a really good way. So that's that's exciting for you, I think. Um, that's sounding pretty good. If we have a look at your Rahu in the first house, so we've just gone through K2 in the seventh house, Rahu in your first house. This uh, axis is going to be in place here in these positions to March 2019. So Rahu might have you feeling a little bit restless. And I can see that with the health thing there. That would make perfect sense. If your health is a little bit run down and you need to be on the couch doing very little, and then Rahu might start to get a little bit restless, like what's going on? We normally do things. So, um, yeah, you could be a little bit restless. Your expenditure might go up a bit, uh, especially if you're on the couch and you have access to online shopping. Watch out. Um yeah, control spending. Yes, absolutely. You want to control your spending. This is a really great time, though, to expand your spirituality, to expand, uh, you know, learning around anything spiritual. Um, delve into that. That will, that will fill that uh, whatever gap that you're trying to to fill with some Amazon shopping is better filled by spirituality definitely believe me I mean look I I was just on Amazon today buying a spiritual book you know what I mean so I I feel two things at once how about that <laughs> um but yeah Rahu might make you a bit restless and that's okay Jupiter let's take a look yeah we've got some mixed results here with your Jupiter so that's Jupiter retrograding the fourth um he goes forward again I'm pretty sure it's in July but Jupiter uh to mid-October um, there are some mixed results here and my what I would say is that just this is a time to if you're having anything to do with property just be careful just check it once check it twice if you have to write a letter to the developer or this or that or just take time right doesn't mean don't do it just means take time and uh, be careful with your mum's health nurture mum if you're lucky enough to have her around 
and um, be careful with spending. Yeah, and I think we did talk about that with uh, Rahu in the first there. So this is a really interesting time for you, Cancer Moon. Uh, great stuff going on there with Venus, though. I realize that the rest of it, yeah, if you're if you're feeling a bit run down, you just need to take it easy. You need to nurture yourself. That would be my advice to you. All right, we're going to move into Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Welcome to your report. So we're going to take a look at your fast-moving planets and then we're going to take a look at your slow-moving planets. So fast-moving, uh, you've got the Sun, June 14th to 15th, shifting from your 10th to the 11th house. This is cool. This is really good. Um, money. Yeah, easy money. How about that? That's a good time, Leo Moon. Lucky you. This is uh, awesome. Promotion. If you want a promotion, now's a good time for that. Boost to salary. Your business will be profitable. I mean, let the good times roll. Let the money flow in. How about that? So um, it's a good sun transit right there. Wish I had that. <laughs> Mercury, uh, 10th June into yeah okay mercury is making quite a bit of a transit so mercury is going to go into your 11th house on the 10th of june and into your 12th house on the 25th of june so we've got two dates here we've got 10th of june 25th june he's making some shifts so it's quite good for the majority of it all the way up to the 25th of june we're looking at good income career good social scene, good everything, um, material comfort, wonderful, good time with siblings, beautiful. After that 25th period though, you might experience a little bit of dip in energies, maybe a little bit of dip in finances, maybe a little bit of dip in uh, your health. So if you've got the money flowing in, do save it, do invest it, it looks like you do, so that's fantastic, um, really, really nice. Venus is moving on June the 9th from your 11th house to the 12th house. So this is beautiful once again, expansion in wealth, gains, uh, continued financial gains, great time to travel, great time to spend with, your, with the love of your life or to find the love of your life. Now's the time. June is the time. But now is probably the time too. Yeah, you're having a good time, Leo Moon. This is great. Well done. Uh, slow moving planets. Let's take a little look. You've got a really nice situation here too. You've got uh, Mars K through conjunction happening in your sixth house. You've got Moon, full Moon in the fifth house. That's June the 27th. This is beautiful. So uh, your work is on the up, Leo Moon. You're on the rise. I'm telling you now, this is gorgeous this is great um, Mars your wealth is increasing again very good and full moon you may be integrating learnings around creativity and intellect something to do with creativity and intellect will come to fruition you will learn something you will complete on something it's just going to be beautiful so that's fantastic uh, Rahu in the 12th, so we just looked at your Ketu in the 6th and we're looking at your Rahu in the 12th. Now this axis is going to be in place to about March 2019. And um, yeah, okay, so the story gets interesting. You may have some hurdles in your career, that's of course possible, you know, there's always a bit of this and a bit of that going on at the same time, as we all know with life. Um, good note here, don't be overconfident, uh, don't be too cocky. Uh, a bit of cockiness is okay, but you know, don't don't go over the top. I could understand why you would be. I mean, you've got very strong Mars-K through conjunction here happening in the sixth. I mean, that's very much about, you know, take on the enemies, let's go, rah, like, great. But um, yeah, be careful. <laughs> uh, your health and finances could dip a little bit and I mean look with the Rahu energy there if you are experiencing anything that's not fantastic this is a really good time to broaden your spirituality to learn more to investigate more to study more to watch videos like this well done uh, it's a good time for that kind of thing so great really really good uh, with the Rahu energy there all right let's take a look at your Jupiter it's retrograde until about 
July the 10th, I think. I haven't got that wrong. Uh, I didn't make a note of that, but that's okay. Um, but Jupiter's in retrograde and he's in your third house to mid-October. Basically, Jupiter's around to mid-October. Um, and I mean, this could this could be, you know, slowing down your business quite possibly. Um, there could be a dip in your finances due to Jupiter quite possibly. So, I mean, if things are, are great, fantastic, which it looks like they are, but if you're one of those people who's got quite strong Jupiter or Jupiter affects you quite a bit or um, this could be where that's happening. So dip in energies, dip in wealth, business could slow down. Um, sibling, your relationship with siblings might be a little bit tense at times. This is a really good time though for short trips, short travel to get away from it all. That's a fantastic idea. And spiritual activities. This is also, uh, as we said with the Rahu in the 12th, that combination means spirituality is a really worthwhile place to spend your time. So thank you, Leo Moon, for stopping by. And Virgo, Virgo Moon, welcome Virgo. We're going to take a look at your fast moving planets and we're going to take a look at your slow moving planets. So fast moving, what have we got? We've got the sun, June 14th to 15th is shifting from your ninth house to the 10th house. Uh, this could be a time to, yeah, I mean, this is a little bit of a mixed bag for you. Up until June the 14th, you might want to just be careful at work. In exactly what way, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, being careful at work. It's just, yeah, it's just kind of, I guess, respecting people's boundaries and, and um, you know, don't be too, uh, too out there. Um, take a bit of extra care, take a bit of extra time. Now may not be the right time to unveil great expansion plans or, or, or things that you want to do. Um, after the 14th, 15th, my goodness, that's a terrific time. Um, you know, you're really coming into a very auspicious time here. So we're talking easy gains, easy money, like money, money, money. So be careful at work just means, you know, chill out a bit. It doesn't mean don't do things. It doesn't mean put things on hold or cancel meetings. Or No, 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 it doesn't mean any of that. It just means that, you know, if, if you've got capacity to coast a little bit or just go a bit slow, do that because you're coming into a really, really good time. And that's after June 14, 15, around there. Uh, Mercury, let's take a look here. So Mercury is making quite the transition this time, going into three areas. So going on the 10th of June into your 10th house and then on the 25th of June into your 11th house. So quite the transition. Uh, Mercury is covering a lot of ground. So again, we've got a bit of a um, mixed bag here. We've got up until the 10th of June, for example, possibly some arguments, um, possibly a dip in energy, dip in financial health, that kind of thing. Oh, dip in finances or dip in your health, I should say, or in your financial health. Sure, why not? Uh, but after that, I'm pretty sure we're looking at after 25th of June, this should be a really good time. I mean, even when Mercury's in the 10th, that's good there too. So yeah, I mean, we've got a good time coming for you, an easier time, good relations, good social scene, uh, boost to your willpower for sure, um, boost to your health, thanks to Mercury. And if you're single, it's a good time to get out and mingle. Uh, Venus, what have we got going on with Venus? So June the 9th, we've got Venus shifting from your 10th house to the 11th house. So again, we've got a little bit of a mixed bag here. So you're coming out of a time of possibly a bit of stress, perhaps some hurdles at work. And yeah, I mean, we are looking at that with the sun there. So, but after that, after June the 9th, we're looking at a boost to your social status, boost to money, boost to your social scene, social status, yeah, love, being with the one that you love. This is a great time finding the one that you want to love or that you've always wanted to love. 
really good time. So you've got Mercury and Venus helping you with that. Fantastic. Two planets helping you, my goodness. Uh, slow moving planets, let's see what's going on here. So this time I've structured it so that we're going to look at Mars K2 conjunction in your fifth house. And we're also going to touch on that full moon there happening in the fourth, um, June the 27th. So what have we got here? We've got work on relationships and work with everyone. Yeah, so you've had some ups and downs thanks to um, Mars K2 conjunction. Yeah, and I mean, you, you've got some ups and downs happening there with your fast-moving planets anyway, so it really is a mixed bag for you, Virgo Moon. Um, I can't for sure say <clears throat> anything in particular uh, for you guys, but what I can say is that now is a really good time for you to work on all kinds of relationships, work to strengthen your relationships, work to uh, improve the relations with people around you definitely this is a good time for that um, and when it comes to that full moon in the fourth on June the 27th that will be a time of integrating learnings around finances and health so something around that finances and health that is going to come to culmination fruition and you'll be able to integrate any learnings around that Rahu in the 11th because of course we've got Ketu in the 5th there, so we've got Rahu in your 11th, and this axis is going to be in place to about March 2019. And this is fantastic, my goodness, I'm happy to see this. I love reporting good news, and you've got good news here. So you've got increased income, thanks to Rahu. You've got your social standing improved. Um, social circles broaden, network circles broaden and increase. Your children may get married, and this is a really terrific time to broaden and deepen your spirituality as well. Um, that's Rahu in the 11th. What else did I want to say about that? I also wanted to say about your Rahu in the 11th that it will, it does require some energy from you. It requires action. Rahu is the unknown and you will have to put effort in to, to yield uh, the benefit of Rahu and that that is just how that is so we've got jupiter in your second house to mid-october and of course jupiter is currently retrograde to about i think it's the 10th of july i should check that i'll check it in the overview video this is why i'm doing an overview video it's so good because then i can catch little things like this and just explain it in the overview um but Jupiter is in your second house to mid-October and this is sensational Virgo moon. This is so good. I'm loving this for you. Great wealth, great increase to wealth, hopefully. Uh, your wealth situation should at least be stable and it should improve really. Um, and I mean, we're seeing that. Even though with some of the fast moving planets, I did mention dip in finances and things like that. Hopefully this Jupiter is big and strong and powerful for you and uh, will keep things really good. Um, this is also possibly a time when you may receive awards or recognition for all that you are and for all that you do. So that's fantastic. Um, family relationships and health. That's also this is a great time to spend with family. Beautiful time to spend with your family. And hopefully those relationships are getting stronger and uh, are being renewed and you've also got that Mars K2 conjunction in the fifth there which is helping that energy too so this is really beautiful um, your health should be good you know health should definitely be good at this time and this is a terrific time if you're planning to become pregnant lucky you because Jupiter is placed beautifully for exactly that so Virgo Moon thank you so much for tuning in and I will also be recording the next video which is part two and that's Libra through to Pisces so thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time